Now, as we look at this in here, we can see the flocculus sitting over here, the nodulus over here, the vermis over there. Um, this, this becomes really disorienting. When, when most textbooks want to call this and this a lobe, it's very, very disorienting to students. They're not connected. Um, they're, they're sitting, you know, you got one piece over here, piece over there, piece over there. And this is all part of the flocculum nodule lobe. Um, functionally, it's more important than anatomically. All right? Well, the information flow here um, is going to become really strange and bizarre. Because just a second ago, I said the majority of what goes on in the cerebellum is inhibitory. Yet you look at this, and what do you see? Overwhelming. Overwhelming. There are excitatory pathways. These mossy fibers and climbing fibers are bringing signals to the cerebellum. They are excitatory signals coming into the cerebellum. Most of what the cerebellum does to that signaling is then inhibitory. The majority of outputs from the cerebellum are inhibitory outputs that are going to go to the deep cerebellar nuclei, they're going to go to the vestibular nuclei, and they are going to bring about some degree of inhibition. The signals coming from the deep nuclei, from the vestibular nuclei, are once again excitatory. So what's happening here is that we have a bunch of excitatory signals coming into the into the cerebellum. What leaves the cerebellum is a tremendous amount of in inhibitory signal. So that when this response to this input is actually measured, this response is muted. This response is toned down. It is not overstated. So as you look at this, as we talk about it, and we're going to spend a lot of time looking pretty much at, at two figures, because what I found is, in my experience is, students um, get a little bit stumped by this. Cross-section of part of the cerebral, cerebellar cortex. These layers become important to understand. And we're going to look at them a couple of different ways. Um, we're going to uh, take a, a minute to talk about fiber tracks and stuff in here. But you have to understand what's happening. This white matter layer, white matter, what's that make it? It's axons. And when you look at this, okay, if we see this as axons, we see all these things in here as synapses, these various cell bodies, it starts to make sense. The white layer in here are the inputs and outputs. The red fibers coming in here are the mossy fibers climbing the green um, let's see are the per, are the um, climbing fibers mossy fibers and then the blue fibers coming out associated with the big cell bodies up here for Kinji fibers so the white layer is all axon we get up into this granule layer Granule layer is going to have several types of cells dominated by these Golgi cells, big ugly things up here. We're going to see the granule cells. We're going to see all sorts of cells in there. 
and a tremendous number of synapses. Synaptically, this is a rich area. We're then going to have a, the layer sitting just above that granule layer, the Purkinje layer. Purkinje layer is going to have Purkinje <coughs> cells. Purkinje cells or Purkinje fibers are really, they're wild, they're crazy. cells that you own, they, are, they have a very bizarre structure. We see the Purkinje fibers, the Golgi cells, typically the cell bodies are in the Purkinje layer and all of their, their um, axons are in the uh, granule layer, but that's almost arbitrary. We then have this, what is called the molecular layer. The molecular layer has probably more synapses than the granule layer. But what gives us its really interesting appearance has to do with the um, axons coming up here and spreading out. So they get up there, they branch, and they form this, this oh, it's kind of like a, a musical staff almost. And there's a lot of information exchange going on there. So you really want to take a look at the, how this is organized in cross-section in this way. And we're going to look at it in, inf in an inf information flow in just a second. So we're going to have information coming into and leaving the cerebellum via all of that that I just showed you. Pathways coming in, coming in from the cortex, coming in from leg and arm, proprioception. Proprioception, what does that tell you about your leg and arm? Uh, the position. Where they are, the position, OK? These leg and arm interneurons. What you're going to see is there's some very long interneurons coming up the, the spinal cord, um, coming in here. Fibers coming in from the red nucleus, the cortex, the brain stem, and spinal cord. Fibers coming in from the vestibular nuclei, so we have vestibular inputs. So these two tables in your textbook, I've just kind of summarized quickly in one slide for you. What they show are the various pathways. So we have pathways. We have where, they, where the pathway originates. And then the peduncles that are involved. So just give you an idea of where the signals are, where they're going. Coming out of the, the cerebellum, the lateral hemispheres go to the dentate nuclei intermediate hemispheres to the interposed nuclei, the vermis to the vestigial nuclei, and then the, the part, part of the vermis, the inferior vermis, and the flocculonodular lobe to the vestibular nuclei. So the outputs are very, very specific. These deep nuclei are sitting kind of just below the, the base of the um, uh, cerebellum itself. And then wh where are they going? What are the targets here? So please take a little while to, we're gonna, we're gonna be running through all of this in just you know, a little bit later today, I think. So taking a look at that. So let's take signals into and out of the cerebellum. This is the figure that is going to not 
totally drive you crazy, but bother you until you learn it. Climbing fibers, inputs from the inferior olivary nucleus, mossy fibers, pontine nuclei, cortical nuclei, red nuclei, they're all, excuse me, all over the place, signals coming in. Let's start with the mossy fibers. The mossy fibers come up. Okay, we've got this big blob-like structure. It's an input. Okay? It's an input. What could that be? Let's think about it. Signals moving along here. What does that make this? Axon. That's got to be an axon terminal, or else this isn't an axon, isn't it? What would this be? A really weird dendrite. Okay. So this big ugly thing is part of this whole structure that's referred to as a glomerulus. Let's hear you. See what happened? You gave it to me, and now I'm passing it on to the front row. And by the time next week comes along, it's going to be in the back row. So this is an excitatory signal coming in. You must remember what's excitatory here and what is inhibitory. If you lose track of that, signaling is going to get really messed up for you. Well, the signal comes in. And we have all of these granule cells. These are the equivalent of a dendrite. We have a synapse here. Signal then moves from the granule cell up to the parallel fibers. We have the excitation, or an excitatory signal, going to an excitatory cell. You'll notice these get up there, they branch. This one branches, this one branches, this one branches, this one branches. They're all branching. Signal travels along the branches. It is an excitatory signal. Cool. Climbing fibers, come on in, come on in, come on in. There are signals are excitatory, and they are going to interact with mostly Purkinje fibers up here, or the parallel fibers. So far, all we've had is excitation. Cool. If the output was going to be driven only by excitation, We'd have a problem. I'm going to skip all of the other, all of these dark ones, and I'm going to go to the Purkinjes. The Purkinjes interact with overwhelmingly the parallel fibers. Okay, with that so far. Parallel fibers are they excitatory? Yes. Yes. They are going to excite the Purkinjes. The Purkinjes, which are the only outputs, are inhibitory. Do you see a problem? They're all, they, they get their signal from the parallel fibers. What's the problem? They're always going to be inhibitory. They're always going to be inhibitory. And what is your cerebellum going to say as far as movement goes? No. Don't do it. Why move? What do you need? You need to inhibit the inhibitory signals. 